Thank you for the introduction. Hello. Um, and before saying anything else, I would like to first thank the organizers for putting today together and also for giving me the opportunity to present my work here today. I didn't actually have the pleasure to meet David, but this work is inspired by his work and I do wonder what he would have thought. So I will spend my 10 minutes introducing you to a um, new nutritional programming model. And for the first time, I don't feel the need to explain the nutritional programming side of my title, but the Drosophila part. So you're all familiar with this. And here's our model organism drawn to scale. <laughs> now, despite the differences, one can find in flies um, functional equivalents to all the major organ systems. So the gut is the gut, and flies also have an adipose tissue, which also performs important endocrine and immune functions, can find equivalents of the kidneys, as well as the liver and the pancreas. And without wishing to push the similarities too far, they do go beyond organ level as the major, uh, for example, the major pathways that are involved in sensing an animal's nutritional status and coupled this with growth are also conserved from flies to mammals. And the classical examples would be insulin, PI3 kinase signaling pathway and TOR signaling pathway. Now for good measure, I'll also tell you a bit about differences and one of the most obvious differences is a fly's life cycle which comprises of very distinct developmental stages and adult stages. And these are separated by um, an interval of metamorphosis here. Now, I hope no eggs will come flying my way if I suggest that the fly larva, uh, which is the developing animal, is a little like the mother of the adult. And in, uh, for, to establish a model of nutritional programming in Drosophila, the experimental approach we decided to take was to manipulate diet during larval stages only and ask what effect this would have first proximally upon the larva itself at the end of development, but more interestingly upon the adult in the long term. And more specifically, what we did was to alter the concentration of yeast in the larval diet or to decrease the concentration of yeast in the larval diet. And because yeast is the major contributor of protein in the fly food, I will be referring to this diet for the purpose of this talk as low protein or LP diet. But this is not to say that yeast only contains protein. And with this, I would like to thank the people who are instrumental in this work. This is the Gould Lab on their best behavior here. And I'd like to thank my boss, Alex, who is the head of the Division of Physiology and Metabolism at DMRC and IMR. And special thanks go to these three guys here, James, Paul, and TJ, who uh, formed the metabolomics core at the Institute. And it's a shame I didn't have time to show you metabolomics data today. And thank you for listening. <laughs>